Hello and welcome to Model Train Fun. My name is Bo Jensen and uh, today we are going to talk more about the uh, M84 decoder. Um, in the last episode, uh, beginner's episode uh, 8B, we uh, looked at the um, signal, the two aspect signal from Feastman. Um, what I would like to get to is to the, uh, the uh, home uh, entry and the home exit signals uh, from Feastman. However, these are more than two aspect. What do I mean by two aspect? Well, a two aspect is red for stop and green for proceed. However, the, um, the home entry signal from Feastman actually has three. So stop for uh, red or red stop, green proceed and yellow proceed slowly. When you have that, you actually need to use multiple connectors on your, um, on your M84. And how do we actually do that? Um, it actually turns out you can do that. You'll have to do some uh, programming on your M84. However, it also means I unfortunately had to divide this video into two. So this video, I'm not going to look at the signals at all. I'm really only going to look at the M84 and how do I get it to behave such that I can use two connectors. Um, in the video, you will see that for the first time, um, I had actually a little trouble with the MFX. Uh, the reason being that there seems to be a software bug in the central station tree that uh, does it such that I can't easily do the programming I, I usually would do uh, using MFX. Um, so I'm gonna program the black one here as I would do the white one. And the way to do that is actually to uh, turn it into DCC mode uh, put it on the programming track because then we can also read uh, from uh, DCC and then we can see what the values are and then we can easier program it. So in this video we are really only going to talk about how do I program this one such that I can get multiple aspects out of two connectors. Enjoy the video. Now let's uh, take a moment and look at the how we uh, could potentially connect uh, the signal. So in this uh, case, the uh, home entry, so the tree aspect uh, to the uh, M84. So um, right now the M84, as you can see, uh, for all connectors uh, is uh, red and we got it happily bring, blinking here. Uh, the only thing I've done is uh, connect it to the track. Um, I've uh, set it here for address 9, so the first connector here is 9, then 10, 11, 12. Um, since uh, we have an um, uh, entry signal that needs to be able to do, ho uh, to do stop uh, and uh, proceed, which is red and green, well, we could put that here on the first connector. If we look here at our uh, mobile station 2, right now it's red and then it's green, so I can shift between red and green here. You see I'm on address 9 and 10. So if I hold this one up, you see I got red here on the connector 1. Now I change it to green on address 9. It, it uh, goes uh, uh, to green on the decoder and it can go back to red. Excellent. So that's the way we can control the um, the uh, red and green of the uh, home entry signal, just as we did on the home block signal in uh, episode, uh, beginners episode 8a. Then we could take the yellow and put on connector 2, because if I look over here, then I can change here on 10 between red and green. So I will hold it up again, right? So red and green, I can change between green here on connector 2, so that's uh, you see that's address 10 over here, and I can, uh, if I shift it back here to red, you can see it changes also here on the M84, right? So green and red, so that's address 10. So in that way, I can use two addresses and I can get the aspects I want. However, if you notice the thing here, so let's say that I want connector 1 here to be red and green, that's fine. But when I activate something here on connector 2, which could be the green, which I do now. So let's say I put the yellow in the green. So the green over here is still lit, right? And in truth, I either want red, green or yellow, right? 
But when I change them here, you see they are independent. So connector two is independent of connector one. In the same fashion, if I take connector one and I change it, for example, if I change it to red, then I want the yellow to go away, right? So you see, we need to somehow uh, make a connection between these two. How do we do that? In order to use the M84 uh, with a signal that uses uh, two addresses and uh, across two connectors, uh, we need to do a little programming. So what do we need to do? Well, if we look at the uh, M84 here, uh, as you can see now, uh, connector one is green and uh, connector two also has a green. So in truth, when there's a green over here, then we don't want anything on connector two. So uh, when there's a green, I don't want anything else on connector one or two. If it's red over here on connector one, I don't want anything else on connector one and two. Well, how do we do that? Well, uh, the uh, M84 has a feature called switch group or Schaltgruppe in German. Um, that basically means when you change to a certain connection, then it can turn off other stuff. So for example, here, if I change uh, connector one to red, you see that changed to red. Now I can tell the M84, then turn off uh, the uh, green on connector one, the red on connector two, and the green uh, on connector two. So in that way, every time I change, so in this case, I change to uh, red one. If I change to green one, then I can also tell it, turn everything off on connector one and two. If I go to uh, red two, I can tell it to connect, uh, turn everything else off. And that's basically what we want to do. Now, how do we do that? Now, let's uh, look at the uh, M84. Uh, in this case, I got the uh, black uh, M84, so the 60842, uh, which is MFX enabled. Um, let me just go out of stop mode. Let's uh, try and see if we can reprogram this one. So we go into the edit, edit article list. Um, over here, you see I got all the uh, connectors here, uh, as well as uh, the device itself. I select the device itself. You see I already did that. It's blue. I go to the lower right hand corner, the little triangle, click on this one. And now I can go on the configuration tab. It will actually uh, read the uh, configuration of the uh, M84. We have to be patient. So that was first the uh, root uh, information and that's the configuration information. If I open the configuration here, you see I don't have much to change. I really only have the CV79, uh, which is the mode we have talked about in a previous episode. Um, so what do I do? I go up here to the burger menu and then I click output. When you do that, it will actually uh, read additional uh, information. And here you can see I can do some advanced programming, among other things, the switch group here. Now, unfortunately, as it turns out, to me it seems like the uh, CS3 has a bug here. Hopefully that will work in a later version. But whenever I change things here in the uh, switch group over here, I hit OK. And even if I go out, it seems like it will never work and it will never take. Uh, so basically, if you reread it, then you can see it, it still hasn't changed it. So what we'll do is we'll do the, we will uh, actually um, put the M84 in uh, DCC mode and then program it uh, using CVs in DCC mode. Um, so in order to do that, uh, since I got it here as uh, MFX, now I want to delete it. So I basically click on my uh, module again, and then I hit delete, and yes, I want to delete it. Uh, so now it's deleted scenes from the uh, CS3's perspective. Now we need to go and change the M84 uh, such that it is actually in DCC mode. In order to uh, program the uh, M84, uh, in DCC mode, uh, we need to make sure that the uh, M84 is uh, connected to the uh, programming track. So you see here, I got it connected to the track, and now we need to investigate where this wire goes on the M84 or on the CS3. Uh, we zoom out a little, 
if I uh, look at my uh, CS3 here, you will see uh, over here, I got two power connectors. I got one that's closed or a green here that can go to the track that's closest to the uh, power from the uh, power supply. And then I got another one. If you actually pull this one out, let me see if I can do that. You can actually see that the symbol on here is a track and it says PROG, right? The other one does not have PROG underneath there. So what I need to do is I need to connect to this one here and that's the wire I need to uh, connect to the track. So now you see I got two wires here. I got one wire here and that's actually the one to the regular track that goes over here. The other one that goes to the uh, programming track I have here and that's where I connected my M84 now. Um, so it's important it sits there. Why is that important? Because it's only on the programming track that you can read DCC from the uh, M84. Now the other thing I need to do is, and remember I have power off, you see there's no power down here. I need to make sure that my M83 is in DCC mode. So remember that's uh, connector 10 here. I basically push that up. So now it's in DCC mode. When it's in DCC mode, I also want to set an address here because I do not want to connect it with MFX. I could connect it with MFX, but then I have the same troubles as before. So I'm going to set it to address 9, and I remember that's dip switch 1 and 2, right? So now I have set the address. Now this is important. Uh, so after you deleted the uh, M84 uh, from the uh, CS3, in order to make it forget the CS3, you need to change the address. So you saw before I had a blank address, which I use when I have MFX. Now I need to turn off power and I need to change the address while the power is turned off. And then I can take it out of stop mode, hence giving it power again. And that will kind of in, uh, reset some internal logic in the M84, such that it realizes that it's not connected to the uh, uh, CS3 anymore using MFX. Now we are back on the CS3 and remember we are not going to use uh, MFX but we are going to program it manually. And remember this procedure works both for the white uh, M84 and the black uh, M84, so both the 60841 and the uh, 60842. So we go into edit, edit article list. I basically uh, create myself an item. It's okay, I just use the standard here. It's called X1, as you see down here. I change the protocol to DCC. I change the address. Remember, we set the address, so I change that to 9, which is the first address on the M84, so I use that one. Then we go to the little triangle in the lower right corner. Uh, and now when we go into the configuration, um, yeah, now you see here, Sometimes you get stuck in this case where nothing happens. This counter up here should count down. It does not. So in order to fix this, what you have to do is completely shut down the uh, central station tree, wait a couple of minutes, and then start it up again. So I'm going to do that now. I go close. I go OK. I go back to system. I hit system here. If you are already in some kind of setting, you can go back, and then you can hit system and then you can have, hit shut down. So now I'm uh, back at the central station tree after I restarted. Uh, remember why was it I had to do this? Well, actually because there was a bug in the central station tree uh, such that I could not update using MFX. So I had to go through a little trouble to actually make my uh, M84, which is MFX uh, enabled, not work as MFX. Uh, so um, this, I guess, uh, is good and bad. It's, it's nice that uh, when you have MFX devices, they just work and so on. But when you need to do something uh, non-MFX on an MFX device, you have to go to the trouble of making sure they are completely disconnected. Um, from now on, what we're doing will work both on the white and the uh, black M84, so the 60841 and the 60842. So we have restarted the um, CS3, 
we remember to go out of stop mode, otherwise we cannot program it. Uh, we hit edit, edit article list. You see, I still got my device here, so that's the X1. I can check the name at the bottom, the protocol DCC and address nine. So we can hit the small triangle in the lower right hand corner in order to edit. When we're in here, we see the uh, settings uh, for the uh, M84. Uh, we can go to the uh, configuration and now you can see it immediately starts reading. You can also see on the device itself, it's, it's doing the reading. Now, I don't know uh, what um, condition your M84 is in, uh, but I would recommend uh, to consider resetting it. How do you reset it? Well, that's CV8 here. You basically put in an eight. So you basically click on the value here and we say we want an eight in here. And then you can see it's being sent to the uh, M84. You can see it says OK now, so it's been reset. Let me just go out of this. Uh, by the way, here's a bug in the CS3. You see when I go out of this, you see the address down here changed. You see now it says address three. I need to make sure to go back to address nine. I can hit the little triangle. We can go into the configuration. It can read it. Now, so here is only the uh, most uh, common uh, CVs uh, for accessories. We want the uh, specific CVs uh, for our M84. How do we get to that one or to those? We hit the burger menu here. We hit load uh, CV template. In here, you got a lot of different templates. The one you need to find is a 60841 DCC M84. Now, don't worry, this template also works for the 60842. So we click on this one and then we hit OK. And now you can see it's reading a lot more uh, CV values here. It's on 26 now and counting down. Uh, however, while it's loading, you can still program it. It can actually figure that out. So you can just go ahead and program it. However, let's uh, start talking about what it is we want to change. So here in um, CV 136, um, by the way, notice they're kind of, um, they're kind of, oh, I'm scrolling the wrong way. They're, they're grouped uh, according to the connector. So you see, they are not in a consecutive numbering order here. Um, if I scroll just a little further down, you will see 114, 136. Uh, however, they are grouped um, according to the connector. So you see here 112 is the red one. So unfortunately, it's in German. So rot means uh, red. So it's a red one function. Uh, 114 is red one period. And 136 is red one Schaltgruppe. Or uh, it's called switch group in English. If we scroll a little further down, then you see green one function. So green here is green. So rot is red and green is green. So it comes green one function, green one period, and then green one Schaltgruppe or switch group. And that's how it continues. However, what we're interested in is the um, first, the red one switch group here. Um, so what the red one can do is when we choose red one or it goes on, then you can turn other things off. If you look over here to the right, you can see how it is by default. Remember, I just reset the M84, so this is the default settings. If you look at it here, when red one is chosen, then it says, you see this one is filled out, green one aus. That means then it turns green one off. So aus means, means off. So um, in this fashion, when you select the red one or the red on connector one, green one will turn off. So this is the default function. Now we want to change this. So we click on this. You see now it gets highlighted and this down here gets black. I also want to, when I uh, switch on red one, to turn off uh, the uh, connector two, both red and green. How do I do that? Well, you see red one house, or sorry, red two house. I can basically click on this one. You see it sends it to the uh, M84. It comes back with an OK, right? So now when I choose red one, green one will go off and red two will go off. 
I also want green too, so I can select that one as well. So now you see it says OK. So this makes it handy to actually uh, do it on the CS3. You could also see over here in this column, I could just have put in value 14 and I would have been equivalent to it. So now I set red 1 up so it um, turns off green 1, red 2 and green 2. I go on to uh, the green 1 uh, switch group here. It's by default already red 1 off, but I also want red 2 off. Okay. By the way, when you're clicking on the small values over here, wait till it says OK before you click on the next one. You can actually click fast, but I've seen once in a while it, it uh, doesn't work as you expect. So I want red 2 off and I want green 2 off. Okay, so now I've fixed uh, red 1 and green 1. Let's uh, find here we got red 2. So when we got red 2, I want green 1 off. And I want red 1 off. Okay. And then the last one, that's the green 2. So now we got the green 2 here. It already says red 2 off, but I also want green 1 off. And red 1 off off okay and uh, if you look at the m84 every time you program you can also see it uh, reacts to it so now in essence we have uh, changed the uh, four switch groups so now we can go back uh, i got here my um, x1 uh, oh by the way again don't forget there seems to be a bug in the CS3. You see it changes the address to tree when you have been in and configure and come out. So you have to remember to change this to nine. Let me uh, make the um, other uh, connectors as well. So here I got X2, I want it at DCC. That one is actually number 10, so that's connector two, right? Remember connector one is address nine, connector two is address 10. I want a uh, connector three. I will put that in as 11. And I want connector four. I will put that in as 12. So now I got all the four connectors here. I can change them. Uh, but as you see on the screen, it uh, may or may not actually uh, fit with what you see on the device. All right, so now we added the uh, all the switches. And do remember what you see on the screen of the CS3 might not be what you see uh, uh, on the M84 uh, until you uh, changed it a couple of times. So they could be out of sync uh, till you change it. Now let's examine what we got here. If we look at uh, X4, if I click on this one, you see it turns to green, it turns to red. The X3, uh, which is connector three, turns to green turns to red. So those function as before, we have not touched them. Now let's go to the X1 here. I'm going to click that one on green. And you notice when this one goes on green, all the others on connector 1 and 2 is off. If it goes to red, only red is on across connector 1 and 2. Now if I go to uh, connector 2 and I click green, notice now only green is on on connector 1 and 2 and I can click that at red again. So you see every time I uh, press on the other connector, it remembers to turn on uh, the first connector. Now, uh, the trick here is we can change this into a signal now. So how do I do that is I go down to the tabs we see down here below. I click the light signals. And uh, remember, this is a home entry signal, so it has a uh, green or stop green uh, and uh, yellow so red green and yellow so uh, stop uh, proceed and proceed slowly if you look down here there's one here called hp012 that's actually uh, basically uh, the combinations we want however if you choose this one it will not work you actually have to go a little further down till you find the one that's called hp012 scale if you click this one, so see now I have uh, X1 here highlighted and I'm going to click on this one so I'm going to turn into it. Um, then 
Um, now it will actually be using two addresses. However, it will also be using uh, the uh, X2 as well. So I'm going to uh, uh, delete the X2 since we don't want that anymore. I got my X1. I'm going to call this one uh, signal because that's our signal now. Okay. Uh, and now we uh, try it out and you cannot try it out here from the edit accessories you actually have to go out so I hit OK. So uh, now we have the signal out here and we can start playing with it. So you see it's on red now if I click on this one and I click green notice now it's green one uh, that turns on. If I select this one and turn the uh, proceed slowly you'll see that it's actually uh, the green two that turns on. And in the same fashion, I can go back to red and now it's red one that turns on. So now I actually have connected the signal on my CS3 with the M84 uh, in a way such that everything fits together. Now, uh, in order to finish up, uh, don't forget to uh, move the signal uh, from the programming track or sorry, the M84 from the programming track uh, to the layout uh, as well. If you have the uh, white M84, you might be happy that it's in DCC mode and everything works as it is now. Uh, you can also uh, turn it uh, into Macklin Motorola mode. Remember that's tip switch 10. If you have the uh, black M84, so the 60842, um, you could also keep it as you want. Don't forget to put it on the layout instead of the uh, programming track. Um, you could also uh, turn it into Macklin Motorola mode or you could actually use it as MFX. So the good thing is when you use a re-register as MFX, it will actually still work as an intended. So I can show you that uh, quickly here. So I'm going to go into edit, edit article list because I want to delete uh, those I had from before. So I'm deleting these. I can hit OK and now we can go in and say uh, discover MFX items. I'm just going to say get a new address and this works even though you don't have a blank address. Usually I always recommend a blank address because then you can look at it and say oh it's uh, MFX uh, uh, determined what the address is. So now it's going to read uh, the uh, MFX decoder and you can see it found a M84. Excellent. And now you can see it, it found uh, the four switches in there. All right. We wait till it's done. It found one. Yes, that's what I expect. And now we go to the edit article list. You make sure the first one is chosen. Again, you can go to the bottom here. You can hit the light signals. And then you can hit the correct light signal. So remember the HP012 scale. If I select this one, notice what happened up here. A2 actually disappeared because it's smart enough to know that those two were connected. Uh, it couldn't do that, the CS3, when you had the white one because it didn't know they were connected. But in this case, it know it's connected. We can hit OK. I got one signal. I can choose yellow. And you see now it's the uh, uh, green two uh, that um, lights up. I can go to green and now we see it's the green one. I can go to red and now we see it's red one. So everything functions as we would expect it to do. Now you saw on the uh, central station tree, it was relatively easy when you found the correct CV. There was a small pattern where you could uh, select each of the uh, um, connections you want to turn off and then the value magically appeared. However, if you're using the uh, mobile station 2, it's not as simple. So that's why I basically uh, put the values here on the screen for you such that you can use them. So what do you see here? Well, if you have a connector 1 and 2 here, so we got uh, these two connections. You can see it says one and two up here. Then basically the uh, CV values you need to put in uh, are the ones uh, specified below. So 
136 must be 14, 37 must be 13, 138 must be 11, and 139 must be 7. Um, if you want to use the uh, connections uh, 2 and 3 uh, for your signal, then you uh, have to have the uh, values you see below here. And notice both its different CV values um, and its different values you put in the CV. Um, in the same fashion, if you're using connection uh, 3 and 4, then you can see the values here. And again, notice here it's from CV 140, 41, 42, 43, and the values are completely different. Unfortunately, uh, that's how it works. By the way, in the central station tree, if you can't figure out the, uh, the uh, clicking of the uh, uh, individual connections as well, you can enter the same value. So just go to CV141, for example, and enter 208, and that will work as well. Now let's uh, change the switch groups as you just saw I did on the central station tree before, but uh, this time I'm going to uh, use the uh, mobile station too. So how do we do that? Well, uh, first of all, don't forget to connect it to the track. Uh, don't forget to set the um, dip switch up here for an address and put it in um, DCC mode because that's the easiest way to programming it. So when it's in DCC mode and you can see I got that here, um, then dip switch 10 needs to be on on. Okay. Um, and of course you need to remember to do this when you have power off. You see I also have the uh, mobile station 2 in stop mode. I go out of stop mode and you see it's here. Now what do we do? Well you basically create a fake uh, locomotive and you use that for the programming. Uh, so the first thing you do is make sure you are in a place where there's no previous locomotive. So you hit the locomotive button until you find something. You see I found one here where it says uh, no loco. Then I can hit uh, shift and locomotive. And then remember I can use these ones over here to scroll up and down. So down on this one and up here. I want to go to enter manually. I select this one by selecting the switch next to enter manually. Okay. And then I um, uh, scroll down and <clears throat> then I find one here that says DCC. I select that one. I select the address. So remember in these videos I'm using address 9 but use whatever address you have chosen. So you can use the plus and minus here or you can use the shift and the button to jump faster. Okay, I'm going to use the plus till I find address 9. Okay, I hit OK. I don't care about the name of the locomotive. I'm just going to hit OK. I'm just going to choose a random icon and now you have it here. Our ABC locomotive. Now I can go to shift and locomotive and then here I got program CV and you can see the CVs here. Um, so I can uh, CV1 for example, I basically just hit OK and then you can see it actually reads it and says it was 3. Uh, let me uh, just uh, uh, go back here. So I'm ready here to do the CV1 and ready to hit the OK. If you notice down here when I do it, so I'm going to hit OK now you see something actually happened on the M84. Uh, these might blink, but for sure this one here will blink uh, when it's being programmed. And now I can actually set the values to see one was three, so I can set the value. I'm not gonna set this value, however. Um, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna start, so I don't know what condition the M84 is in. If you already know it, you may not have to do this. I wanna reset the M84. I do that by going to address 8, uh, CV address 8. Um, you can see that's 3 right now. If you put in an 8, um, and I'm going to do that off camera, you see now it's actually been reset, and now it should work as it uh, normally does. Um, so what was it we needed to do? 
Well, you saw before I had uh, some values I needed to enter. It was very easy on the central station three, but on the mobile station two, I kind of have to memorize it. So the first one I have to do is CV 136. So I go here, I hit shift and the knob and you can see it goes up and I find 136. Oh, close. So I'm going to hit plus and now here's 136. I say, okay, you see it has value zero. Uh, that one here, I needed to be value 14. So I set that one to 14. I hit okay. It gets programmed. It's ready to uh, program the next one. I need 137. That one there, it reads it. It's one. It, I need a 13 in there. I try and use the shift knob this time so it goes a little faster. Oh, I'm close. So now I hit the plus. So I want 13 in there. I hit OK. And then for uh, CV 138, I read that one. OK, it says zero now. And there I actually want an 11. I hit OK. Yes. And uh, then we want CV uh, 138, 139. So I hit OK. It reads the value. It's zero. I basically want a seven in there. OK. I hit OK. And now it's basically programmed. So now I can go out. Uh, by the way, I can hit Shift Locomotive. I can scroll down and now I can remove the locomotive if you don't want it anymore. I select yes, so it's gone. However, I cannot just directly access my M84 now. Remember, it's in DCC mode. So I hit the stop button and then uh, we look at our dip switch here. You see it's in DCC mode. I'm just going to put it back in Macklin Motorola mode. So you see now it's down. I have the two first ones on, which is basically uh, address nine. Okay. I go back to my uh, Macklin Mobile Station 2. I go out of stop mode. I click my accessories button. I find address nine and 10. I already have it. Otherwise, remember you can select up here to go up and down and you can select the shift and an up to go fast back and forth. So we have it here. And you notice what you see on the screen will not match what you see down on the M84. Uh, but that's only till the uh, first time I connect or change something. So now I'm going to try address nine and select red. We do that. And now you see it's only the uh, red that goes on. I select green. It's only the green that goes on, nothing on connector two. Let me try address 10. I want to select green here. And now you see the green is on here and nothing on connector one. And I try red and you can see it's there. So basically it wasn't too difficult to program on the mobile station two if you know the CV values. And please look uh, previously in the video where I gave hints on what it needs to be if you're using connector one, two connector 2, 3, or connector 3, 4. Excellent. So now we have uh, reprogrammed uh, the uh, M84 such that I can use two connectors uh, for one signal. This means that I can, uh, in a future video, go through how do we connect the uh, home uh, entry and the home exit signals uh, from Feastman. Um, the cool thing uh, was that it wasn't really that difficult. You just have to think a little about how to do it. It required uh, two tricks. One, to understand how to program the uh, M84, but also how to understand how the signals work. For example, inside the, uh, the central station tree, what does it actually send out on what address, right? So we have to pair those two things together. You saw we actually succeeded in inside the central station tree to choose uh, the uh, red for stop and it came out on the connector we liked. We chose a uh, green for proceed. It came out on the connector we liked and we chose proceed slowly and it actually came out on another connector and it, it disabled the two first ones. So everything actually uh, fits together. Um, unfortunately, uh, the MFX didn't help us this time. 
Uh, however, it wasn't too bad. We just turned it into DCC mode and then we could program it. So in this uh, ep uh, episode, there was really no difference between having the black M84, which is the 60842, or the white M84, which is the 60841. They actually uh, is the same thing. Um, we also um, looked at uh, how do you do it uh, on the mobile station too. And here we saw to me what is some of the power and benefits of the central station three. It was actually easier in the central station three. In the mobile station two, uh, we basically just had to memorize the values and then we can actually just put them in as CV values. In the central station three, you actually get something, although it's in German, that you actually can click on and you can set. So that meant when we had to set the switch groups, uh, group switch groups down here, or the shelter group uh, for the connectors, it wasn't actually too difficult. We could click and choose which ones we wanted to turn off, right? That's actually a bit code, and that's actually what makes it difficult for the mobile station too. So it is actually a benefit there. Um, so. Um, I, I really hope uh, you uh, liked this video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up and please do consider subscribing to the channel as well so we can uh, see each other in the next video where we will look at the signals and actually connect them up to the M84. Enjoy!